Night shift paramedic Anon clocking back in. Someone asked for the story I posted a while back, so I figured I'd retype it for you guys and maybe have some more fun telling it. I absolutely guarantee the truthfulness of the story. Be young night shift EMT several years ago, haven't yet ascended to paramedic. Working for a private ambulance service in a major US city, mainly hauling chunkers to dialysis or home from the hospital. Naively believe that I've become fully hardened to the horrors of obesity, my soul still full of hope. Assigned to the bariatric ambulance for the day, working with two of my regular partners, S and R, enjoying some burritos in the back of the rig with the boys after a series of rapid fire calls. Talking shit about the fatties we've had, strong bro energy. Our radio gets an alert. We're tasked with taking a 60 something year old woman home from the hospital. Call details list weight, as less than 100 kilograms. No other details provided. As we arrive to the hospital, I take out the tiger bomb that I keep in my pan pocket, smearing a fat stripe across my surgical mask before passing it around. R follows my lead, S declines. S is a proud, tough guy. Wheel our stretcher through the ambulance bay doors and head towards the ER room. Start noticing the nurses. They look at us, then down the hall towards our patient's room before looking back with pity in their eyes. The bad vibes in the ER seem to thicken as we approach. We pull the gurney up alongside the nurse's station for our section of the ED and tell the attending nurse who we're there for. A visible wave of relief flashes across her face. One more red flag. She starts putting together the paperwork and asks the question that drives home just how fucked we are. So, did they tell you about the roaches? All three of us look back and forth amongst each other, not wanting to believe what we've heard. The nurse sees our shock and lays out the situation for us. The patient arrived at the hospital a day prior for a leaky bilaria drain and additional complaint of chest pain while in the hospital. If you aren't familiar, a bilal drain is used when bile blocks up its ducts and backs up into the liver. Looks a lot like jaundice. In extreme cases, a port is inserted so excess bile can drain into a bag outside the body, and it's exactly as gross as it sounds. When patient arrived, she had with her a walker and a trash bag filled with seemingly random shit. Peanut butter, a bottle of sriracha, snack foods, magazines, and random charging cables and clothes. Literally all of it crawling with live fucking roaches. Roaches crawling out the cushion of her walker. Appalling shit. Nurses wrapped up all of our things in biohazard bags and taped it up as best they could, quarantining the bags in the hospital room's bathroom. Get the full rundown on the patient's condition from the nurse. COPD, CHF, diabetes, hep C, hypertension. All the greatest hits. Eventually, we can't stall for time anymore and have to meet our patient. It's S's turn to lead the call, so we stack up behind him and enter the room to meet our new friend. Immediately assailed by the smell, that classic fat person stink of sweat, mildew, spoiled meat, and sweet yeast. If you've worked EMS, you'll know the smell. Our call said less than 100 kilograms. By my estimate, I'd put her in the neighborhood of 150 kilograms. Patient is about 5 foot 8 inches black woman and has to be about 5 feet across, essentially a ball. Distinct white beard hairs on her chin, sweatpants coated in about a decade's worth of spills, wearing one of those night bonnet things old black women wear. I can see the chunky dandruff clinging to the elastic. S greets the patient and introduces us while she stares back in silence, sizing us up one by one with her beady eyes, sunken into her swollen face. About fucking time! She squawks at us chins distinctly flapping in independent directions. I take the initiative to round up her roach e possessions as my partners try to calm her down and take her vital signs. Open the bathroom door, immediately noticing no less than five roaches on the floor. Collect biohazard bags from nurse and re-enter the bathroom. Working as fast as I can, 
I double bag as much of the shit as I can. I can hear my partners trying in vain to calm the patient, who is ranting almost entirely incoherently. The only real identifiable words are her frequent cries of, Oh Jesus! Jesus Christ! After what feels like an eternity, the belongings are stowed and we manage to slide this human beanbag onto our gurney using a draw sheet. Not because she can't stand, but because she refuses to try. As we leave the room, I see the nurse duck down behind the nurse's station counter to avoid the wrath of the Goliath under our care. She fucking refuses to sit still, flailing and wailing, as it takes all three of us to safely load the gurney into the ambulance. Her screeches of, Oh Jesus! Only increasing in volume. Eventually we get her loaded, and R and I hop up front, knowing that the worst is assuredly yet to come. 20 minutes of driving across some of the bumpiest, roughest, most pothole infested roads in existence. Every bump leads to more screaming, more wailing, more oh law Jesusing. I'm driving, and by the end of the drive, I have seriously considered just barreling the fucking rig into oncoming traffic just to escape the noise. Arrive to an apartment complex, some sort of grimy senior living center. People sitting on milk crates drinking on the sidewalk. When we get out of the truck, one yells, The fat bitch is back! And I suppress the urge to laugh in the patient's face. This is pre-COVID, but I still carried an emergency N95 for this kind of thing. I put it on. Street is all kinds of fucked up and tilted. This, combined with her inability to not fucking flail, makes us almost drop her on the way out of the ambulance. But we get it eventually. Thank Christ the shithole of a building has an elevator, but it can't fit us all. I take the patient's keys and walker and go up first to get the room ready. The room has sort of an antechamber. You unlock the first door and enter a small foyer with two doors leading to two different studio apartments. Open the first door and set foot in the antechamber. Immediately realize my foot is stuck to the door. The floor of the room is coated in puddles of some unidentifiable slime. I see roach traps filled with dead roaches, but still live ones scurrying around as well. The wave of stench has hit me. The fat person musk mingled with shit and rotting food, and it punches through my tiger bomb laden surgical mask, as well as the N95 underneath. Fuck it. She could take it from here, but I'm not opening that apartment. So, I unpack her walker and wait for the others to join me. My partners make it over to me, and we essentially haul the patient off the gurney and onto her walker. Because she is perfectly capable of walking, she just refuses to. As she struggles to her feet, she ends up pushing up against me, and I feel a wetness on my pants. I look down and realize that her bile drain bag, the bag that's been filling with her excess fucking bile, is leaking from its drain port. My fucking pants are now damp with butter huffer bile, and I have to fight back the sudden and violent urge to vomit. As soon as she's off our equipment, S basically forces her to sign the transfer of care form, legally releasing her from our care. The fucking nanosecond that form assigned S is gone. The smell has been getting to him the entire time, and he says he vomited in a planter as soon as he left the building. R and I are getting all the gurney belts squared away as our patient waddles into her dark apartment. We spin the gurney around and are about to head down the hall when the beast begins to wail inside the apartment. She can't get her oxygen to work. I'm looking at the door, but R has already taken off down the hallway. He's done. Hear the patient crying and wailing in helplessness, and I suddenly understand the difference between courage and fearlessness. Grab my tiger bomb, pulling down my masks and smearing a gob of it right onto my nostrils. My eyes begin to water and sting. Steal myself with as much fortitude as I can summon, and I march through the puddle of slime into the stinking maw of the beast. At this point, it's about 10.30 p.m. and pitch dark. Temporarily devoid of vision, I feel my senses heighten. The great miasma of stench becomes a physical force in the air. 
I feel it swirling around me and trying to break past a dam of tiger balm. While I can't smell the bulk of it, I can still feel the thick soupiness of the air as my lungs refuse to accept it. I pull my flashlight from my pocket and try to figure out what the unholy fuck is going on in this room, my vision limited to a three foot wide beam. Scanning right to left across the room, I see her bed, small black specks scurry from the flashlight's beam. I notice food in the bed, some scattered french fries, open sauce packets, and greasy wrappers from McDonald's. I pan left, looking at the floor. Soiled diapers with blatant feces, but that's not what catches my eye. Scattered across the floor are water bottles, all of them full of liquid ranging from yellow to black. Some are leaking, and there are dried puddles on the floor as well. A split second later, I realize what I'm looking at. This is bile. She has been draining her bile sack into water bottles and leaving them on the floor to putrefy. I am now regretting my decision to help her. An animal instinct to flee is building inside, but I manage to fight it back down. The patient is in the corner of the room with an oxygen condenser that she can't get to start. I don't think, I just charge over to her, having to pry my boots from the floor with each step. I realize the fault is a surge protector that's been flipped off. I take a pen from my pocket and restart it, dropping the pen on the floor as it's now been soiled. As the oxygen condenser starts, I turn to leave. And that's when I see it. The crown jewel. The bucket. In the kitchen corner of this studio apartment, surrounded by a mound of loose wadded up toilet paper, there is a Home Depot brand Homer's multi-purpose bucket. And above that bucket, there is a commode seat. The kind used in a hospital for patients who can sort of move, but cannot walk to the bathroom. I'm a tall man, and from across this small room, I can see down into this bucket. And I see shit. This bucket, crafted and built with dreams of helping craftsmen pursue their skills, is three-fourths of the way filled with the nearly liquid shit of a dying obese caricature of a human. I am legitimately staggered, and I stop and stare. This is the final straw for the fatty. I could see the diapers, the bottles, the bugs, and the rot. But to have this final great shame seen by another human was too much for her. Finally, after 60-something years of pure degeneracy and filth, I had found the one tiny shred of shame that she still felt about her life. She screams something, I don't know what, and she throws a paper takeout bag at me. I hear her yell, get out, and I don't need to be asked twice. I bolt from the room as quick as I can on my shaky legs and stagger down to the street where S and R are waiting. S is slumped over on the bench seat, clearly sick. R is laughing his ass off and starts to ask for the details. All I can do is sit down. I don't feel sick anymore, just saddened and shaken by the reality of just how atrocious life can be. I was able to tell them about the state of the apartment after about 20 minutes of sitting and thinking. We ended up contacting APS and I don't know what happened beyond that, but that was the moment that really showed me that no matter how hardcore and experienced you think you are in EMS, there's always something out there darker and much more vile than you're prepared to handle.